Because you got to have faith. You got to have faith. Yes, indeed, we need a little faith. I think we need a lot more than just faith, but we're going to talk about faith tonight and we're kind of checking in on your faith and what's the difference between faith and hope. Hope tells us that maybe it might happen. We hope it happens. Sometimes people tell me, well, I hope it happens. I said, well, we need no hope here. We need to know it's going to happen because hope leaves an area of doubt and possibility that it might not happen. So why are we going to hope? I hope it happens someday. A lot of things could happen someday, but what are you creating? What are you manifesting? What are you asking for? What are you praying for? What is it that is important to you on a daily basis? And what do you need assistance with? Haven't you had something happen in your life that you really thought you couldn't handle? I'm sure many of us have. And at that moment, you felt like, oh, Jiminy Crickets, I need someone to help me. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so we pray and we ask that God bring someone to assist us or that we get delivered by a miracle. We put it out into the universe and we do everything we can to make something positive happen. And then there comes that point where you have to resign yourself and just go, oh, I just got to believe. I just got to have faith because I don't know how. And that's where the intervention of the universe steps in. So often when I sit across from people and we have conversations and I say, oh, when I look into the year, I see this. And they go, well, how's that going to happen, Sarah? Ah, ye have little faith. I know what I see in the energy. Now it's up to you to accept it as a possibility and welcome it into your energetic force field or just let it stay out there and wonder if maybe it's going to happen. If I see something that's something you would love to have happen and you don't know how and you're a mere mortal, a mere human, why not let God handle that? Why not let the how, the where, the when, all be up to the divine? And you become the orchestrator of holding the vision and having the faith. All you have to do is hold the vision. Hold the vision so that you can create what you want. And you can have it all. They say we need the faith of a mustard seed. That's all you need. Have you ever looked at a mustard seed? I have. It's the teeniest of little seeds, a perfectly round little circle seed. That's how much faith you need. So some of us have trouble mustering up the faith of a little mustard seed. But yet we have the ability to drum up the size of a thousand watermelons worth of worry. But all we need is the faith of a mustard seed to get it done. We need to believe that it is possible. We need to see it as, as, if, as if it is already created. And we need to trust. You know, as humans, we have a trust problem. I know, you may say, well, from what I see about the circle of people I've engaged with, it's not easy to trust them. And that may be a truth for your experience. But we're not trusting, again, mere mortals with their conditions and their experiences and their emotions. We're trusting a divine force that has the ability to put together everything that is in this universe. That the more you look at, the more you observe what happens in the universe, the easier it is for you to understand that there's some very intricate workings going on. Let's take a look at an ant colony and what they do to survive and bring the food. You watch them march in single file on a journey to find food and return to their ant hole with their food. They build a colonization and they gather and work together and they are hardworking little insects. I heard this um, from someone that I follow. They went off on this tangent of insects. And for a moment, I was like, oh, good Lord. I don't like bugs. But 
it was interesting. I never stopped to think how much ants do in order to guarantee their survival and together as a team. And interestingly enough is when an ant is in a conflict and one creates a difficulty in their group, they all kind of turn on each other. That kind of sounds like a bunch of humans too. And then let's look at bees. They build their honeycomb and it actually looks like New York City apartments. And they too work together. And they have a teamwork. And we have to look at how do we work together to create. And the first force that we work with is the divine and the angels. And your loved ones on the other side. Everyone is here on the other side to assist us. Everyone is here from the hierarchy of the angels and the divine to be of service to you. And all you need to do is to navigate life and make choices. And I recently, when talking to a client, was channeling a message from Spirit. And Spirit was saying how our life is a series of choices that lead to a series of experiences. And each experience holds valuable connections that allow us to expand our consciousness, to heal ourself, to heal our soul, and to shift where we are and place ourselves in a different direction. Every experience is so unique and offers far more than what we see with our instant look our first glance, we don't always see all the possibilities because usually when we are looking for an experience or an experience meets a criteria, we're looking at just one aspect. We're looking to have ourselves saved or rescued from something that is difficult. And so we ask for something and doors open. And we're so happy to be crossing through the door that we don't see all the benefits Everyone comes in your life for a reason. Have you ever been in a position where you really needed help? And someone said, hey, it's okay, you can come stay with me. Or, you know, we're having family dinner Sunday, would you like to come? Maybe you didn't really have enough for yourself. Or maybe you were feeling lonely and you needed assistance. You see, the universe... Your guides, the angels, they will always place before you the people necessary to fulfill the miracle. And you have to have faith that this will happen. It's a sense of conviction. It's like you know, like you know, like you know, but you may not know how you know, but you know. That's a mouthful, I know. But you know. There's a sense of I am doing exactly the right thing, even though I don't know how it's going to turn out. I feel compelled. I have a sense of conviction. When making choices in life and you're making a choice based with faith, there has to be a layer of conviction that God has your back. The universe is always supporting you. The energy that fuels the entire universe is holding you up at all times. But sometimes we kind of are like wild cowboys and cowgirls riding out thinking, Oh, I've got this, doing it on our own, not quite checking in with the divine and asking the question, is now the time? Is this the person? Is this the opportunity? I've been praying for this and look, God brought it to me. Are you sure that that's what God had for you? Or is it just because it looks like a duck and kind of quacks like a duck? So you're going to just say for sure it's a duck. For all you know, it's a costume. Hmm. Don't people wear a facade? Haven't we seen the illusions in the world? Are we not in a time where we are trying to decipher between illusions and truth? And some of which are within our own individual self. Where's my truth? What, what illusions have I convinced myself are my truth? When now I look back, it's not really who I am. It's not what I am about. And as you look at the energy and you see something coming for you, are you sure that that's what you prayed for? I had a lady say to me, well, can you tell me what the guy's going to look like or that what his profession is? I said, okay, so let's paint this picture. I tell you, I see someone who has brown hair and brown eyes. They're about six one. Their profession is a lawyer. You go to Starbucks the next day. 
someone who is about that height and about that look begins to talk to you. You ask them what they do. They say they're a lawyer. And suddenly you begin to say, this is the one that Sarah told me is coming. Because we give you too much information. And then you take the square peg and really try to shave the corners to fit it in the round hole. So we tell you it's coming. And it's for your choosing. It is not for us to influence what you choose. It is for you to choose the highest vibrational match that usually matches where you are at the moment. So most of the work is within self. And we have to look at ourself and say, do I have faith? Am I aware of what it is I want? Do I really know who I am? And am I willing in faith to wait? The reason why we get ourselves in a hot mess, and there's quite a bit of hot messes going on, is because we don't want to wait. We want it now. Instant gratification. We're in a throwaway society with a lot of instant gratification. And now suddenly we can't get our instant gratification because we can't get what we want because it's stuck on a boat somewhere. And so now we're like, oh, I can't buy the car I want. Oh, I can't get this. This is not coming in. It'll take months to arrive. But I'm used to having it now. And so we've become so accustomed to pushing and forcing and making things happen that even in the tangible world, the physicality of it all, we don't like to wait. So when we pray and we ask the universe to support us, when we ask for that lifelong partner or that new job or to be delivered from some financial affliction that perhaps we caused by choices, but there's still a way out. We want to raise, we want some unexpected money to come, something to change. And then God says, be still and know that I'm God. And that requires having faith. Being still is difficult for, the, for a human, difficult from ants from what I've seen, especially the ones that ran up on my counter the other day. Little sugar ants, busy trying to find where there was a speck of leftover juice from the juice machine. But they were on a mission and they had faith they were gonna get there. They didn't know I was waiting with 409, but it's all a journey and things will come in our way. They will block us. But no matter what happens, we have to have faith. And we have to trust. And we have to know like we know, like we know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that we know that somehow it'll work out. Earlier today, just when I got on the radio station, we were talking about some things. And as we talked, there's an element of who knows but we know everything will be fine because we know. Because when you are in the momentum of the universe always has your back, of the guides and angels are with you as the point of you are never alone. And that even when you're in the darkest of moments and you can't see your way out and you have confusion, which is a human condition, that when you are still and you wait for the dust and the fog to clear, that something will come and you'll put one foot in front of that one and then somewhere along the way you'll turn a corner and there will be your answer. But it's that journey from the asking to the receiving that we mess up. Because sometimes the actuality, the realization of what we want takes time. Now the better you become at having faith, the better you become at creating, orchestrating things the way you would like them to turn out and asking for assistance and not being afraid to ask for assistance, especially from the heavens. And then being in the state of stillness and waiting and holding the faith and not wavering, you will get where you want to go. You will receive what you want. Let's take this radio station, for example, it sends out a signal and it's picked out from miles away. And depending on how strong the signal is and received at a certain location, determines how well you can hear us on the actual radio station. 
sometimes you get that little <laughs> static. So annoying. So you play with your dial and you try to fine tune it. And sometimes the signal just doesn't reach where you are. You drive a mile or two down the road and then, oh, it's on perfectly clear. Thank goodness. We wouldn't want you to miss a minute of the show. But what if we use that radio signal and we compared it to your faith? You see, the radio signal doesn't waver. It is a projected distance of energy that's being sent out and it's been tested and we know how far it's going to reach. And at different times in the day, depending on interference and things around it, it will only reach so far. And at other times, it reaches even further. So whatever the technical things are behind it, but that's what I've gathered from conversations. So let's say that your faith is the radio station. It's the signal that you're sending out. And you really want something to happen. Do you think that your signal dropping in and out is going to make a direct connection and reach all the right channels and all the right people energetically to bring them to you to create what you want? Or do you think that if you're wavering, you're going to keep missing opportunities and people aren't going to hear you correctly and connect with you in the way that they could or introduce you to someone who knows someone who then is the someone who can help you get that new job? It's a signal. Now, the universe is always connected because telepathically, energetically, their signal connection is not based on your ability to hold faith. They hear you, they feel you, they see you in your tears, they see you in your joy, and they hear you in the asking. And in the asking, it is always given instantly because the heaven says, okay, rearrange the stage of their life. Let's redirect some things so that they can receive what they want. And the speed with which that arrives to you in the physicality depends on your faith. Depends on your ability to hold the vision and not waver. And just be. And hold a conscious knowing that it's already done. And not question. Do you think it's going to happen? How do I think it's going to happen? I've given up thinking how it's going to happen. I usually think the universe does a much better job than I can to create it. I just put a few things in motion. I get an idea, which all my friends will tell you. They hit the deck and they're like, oh, good God, she has an idea. Now we're in trouble. She's going to push it to the limit. But I expand. I think of things outside the box that I live in. And I pop up and I say, let's try this. Let's do this. Even my radio producer wants to hide sometimes. But we do. We make the move. And we throw it out there. I learned the trick in sales. You throw spaghetti on the wall, it's going to stick. So we throw it out there. And then we just say, okay, we did our part. Let's see what comes back. And then if what comes back isn't to my liking, to my desiring, to the vision that I had, I go, nah, throw it back. It's like catching a fish. I don't want that fish. Give me another one. And then another one will come in. And then finally, it's there before you. And you say, yes, this is what I want. You can have all that you need and all that you desire. It's already promised. We lost it in the translation. We lost it in the manifestation of you being a little one and growing up in the household. I might be sorry for some of you. The household that you grew up in because they didn't give you that support. They didn't tell you, hey, think big thoughts. Hey, you can manifest anything. You can have as much money in your life as you want. And regardless of where you come from and what you do, if you have the right mindset, even if the deck is stacked against you in some instances, you can still get where you want to go. Just don't pay attention to that part. Work around it. But because parents receive their instructions from their parents and their parents, Perhaps some of their ability to manifest and have faith in certain situations has been worn and understandably so because they have, well, results that say otherwise than what I say. And then there are those who they just pray. They pray and they pray for healing and they keep praying and they never waver and something miraculous happens. 
And that's because there's a force greater than all of us answering those prayers. There's a force greater than you and your ideas that think even bigger than you think, bigger than you could ever imagine. And those are the forces of energy that are creating with you. Always when asking, ask for that or greater. Because I promise you in your vision of yourself and what you think you're worthy of, last week we talked about being enough. But if you're not feeling like you're worthy enough, then you may not believe that you could have something that is fabulous, but you're really happy with very good. But what if the universe knows that you are worthy of fabulous? That's why you always ask for what you desire and something even greater and better and more that is unforeseen to your human condition and experience because you only know the life you've led. And unless you've been trained to think outside the box and live outside the box and reach for something greater, you may settle. And what happens when people settle is they become complacent and then they have low expectations and then they don't find joy and harmony. And then they say, oh, I, I guess this isn't what I want. And then they give up and they move on to something else. And in that journey, they start to get worn down. And then they say, why bother? I never get what I want. But having faith is key to creating what you want. So if you haven't seen a mustard seed, go to your local food store, take a look at them. It's the smallest of things. And every morning wake up and say, I have faith, the faith of a mustard seed and my faith is stronger than my, my wishing and my hoping because my faith knows like it knows somewhere down deep inside of me that all will be provided and every question will be answered and every desire will come to me with ease and grace.